I used a little over 100 prompts in Claude code to build this MVP in 48 hours. If I'm being honest though, I think I moved a little bit too quickly here. If you're new here, welcome to the video. My name is Chris and I build productivity apps. I usually focus on one productivity app per video and today we're focusing on my newest app, Subscription Monster. This is part of a series where I'm building an app from scratch and documenting everything for you guys. Today we're gonna be walking through the MVP I built in 48 hours, including going through a bunch of mistakes that I made and why I'm using a completely new tech stack that I've never used before. A little bit of context, here's the problem that Subscription Monster is solving. I needed an app that could answer the question, what subscriptions are we paying for as a business? Sounds super simple, right? Like why can't I just feed all my bank statements into ChatGPT and ask it? Surprisingly, ChatGPT is not good at answering this question and there's nothing like rocket money for business. So that's the problem that the app is solving and I needed to build an MVP really quickly to validate two things. If I built an app using AI, could it identify subscriptions better than ChatGPT if I gave it a bunch of messy bank statements? Second question is, is the app actually helpful enough for me and other businesses and would I pay for this? myself. If the answer is no to both of these questions, then honestly, this is really not worth pursuing and I should just scrap it right there. So I gave myself 48 hours to build an MVP that could connect a bank account, pull the transactions, and then use AI to scan and find subscriptions. Here's the result after 48 hours. We got Plaid linked up so you can connect your bank account. It's going to pull two years worth of transaction history, and then it's going to use AI to go through and try to find all relevant subscriptions. And the test was actually successful. I actually run an agency business, which I don't really talk a lot about in the channel, but we have a ton of subscriptions and it was able to identify that we were paying for two extra cursor subscriptions that I had thought that we canceled. So just canceling that already saved 40 bucks a month. And it also identified that next month we had a big subscription that was coming up for renewal, which is our Salesforce subscription. And if you're familiar with Salesforce, it costs a lot of money. But I saw this, brought it up with my team and said, do we still need this? And they said, actually, we could take away a couple seats, which saves about 200 bucks a month. In total, after using this tool, I'm saving about $240 a month now. When I saw the subscriptions on the screen, that was honestly a pretty big magic moment moment for me. And that's when I knew that this was definitely worth building. And I think other people are going to find this helpful too. First thing I did was try to figure out what tech stack I wanted to use. Before I start any project, I always think through this because there are trade-offs depending on what database you're using, what front end you're using. And so I like to define those things first before I jump into it. Normally I'm using Firebase or Superbase for the backend database stuff, plain React for the web. And if there is an iOS app, I'm usually doing it with Swift or Swift UI. But for this project specifically, I decided to use Remix instead of just plain React because it has a couple of extra stuff and I'd heard a lot about it. Convex for the database because a lot of people are talking about it. I heard it's really good to use with AI and it takes really interesting concepts from both Firebase and Superbase and kind of combines them a little bit. I'm trying out Clerk for the authentication and I'm using Plaid to do the bank and the transaction import. So why am I experimenting with this new stuff, especially if I'm on a time crunch? I'm trying to get this thing out in 48 hours. It's because for any project I do, I love experimenting with new technologies if possible, especially if it's pretty low risk. And I'm pretty confident that if in the end I don't like it, I can just migrate back to the stuff that I know. So really it's just so I can try and learn a bunch of new stuff. So once I define the tech stack, I jumped right into Claude Code. That's what I'm using to build this MVP. And off the bat, I already immediately made a huge mistake. My advice if you're building with Claude Code or any AI tool in general is to start small and start incrementally building up the features. I did not follow my own advice. I'll be honest, I got a little bit too arrogant. I thought I could break my own rule here. My first prompt was this monstrous prompt that just tried to do every single thing at once. And the minute that Claude Code finished, it was just a bunch of errors. I actually documented all of the prompts that I used to build the MVP. I have a Notion doc right here. I'll probably leave a link in the description if you want to see all of the prompts that I used. To be honest, I'm not that proud of it. Again, I did not follow my own advice, especially at the beginning. So when you see that huge prompt, please don't do that. Do not follow what I did there. But if you look at the prompts, you can see that a ton of it is just me trying to wrestle and fix errors. And I think a lot of this could have been avoided if I was a bit more patient and just started incrementally building rather than trying to do everything at once. You can actually go through this notion and retrace my steps, but a lot of this just was me dictating into Claude code, telling it to make modifications. Can you go read this documentation? Can you go implement this for me? I've actually used Plot a couple times and it is not a fun thing to hook up. Even though I got a bunch of errors, I was actually impressed by how good Claude code was at implementing Plaid. The first mistake was trying to do too much. I should have actually broken things up into these more manageable pieces. Like I should have said, can you set up a basic remix app with the homepage? Literally nothing else, just the remix app. Can you add clerk for authentication? Can you add convex database with this table? I should have taken more small focus steps and then just made sure everything worked along the way. That is 100% what I should have done. That was the biggest mistake with the MVP, but I did get it done. It was able to work in 48 hours. It identified a bunch of subscriptions for me that I was able to cancel and it proved that 
this is a really good idea to pursue. But then after the MVP was done, that's when I started noticing a lot of problems. The first one, which was actually really, really concerning, was that it did not implement the ability to disconnect bank accounts correctly. It did implement the feature like I asked it to do, but what it was doing was it was just deleting the bank account from the database, which sounds okay in theory, but it wasn't fully disconnecting it from Plaid. And that's a problem because Plaid actually charges you a monthly fee per connected bank account. Even though the bank was deleted from my database, it still lived in Plaid and I was still getting charged. Even worse, there's actually no way for me as a developer to go in the back end and disconnect those bank accounts. So after the MVP, when I got my Plaid bill, I was like, why are there 17 bank accounts that are active here? I literally only have one. So I dug into the code, figured out what was going on. But the bad news is I actually have to contact Plaid support to have them delete those bank accounts. Because again, there's no way for me to do it on my end. I'm really happy that I caught that problem early on, but that kind of opened my eyes that, okay, I need to look a little bit deeper on what's going on here because if that's happening, I bet there's a bunch of other stuff that's happening too. This was probably a byproduct of me going too quickly. If I was moving a lot slower, I probably would have caught this as I was implementing Plaid. So I started looking for more things that were going wrong. One thing that popped into my mind was I know that the MVP works. It was able to identify the subscriptions, but did it catch all of the subscriptions? So the next thing I did was I got all of the company bank statements that we had and I manually went through and tried to pull out as many subscriptions as I could find. This took me like three hours to do and I didn't even identify all of them. I started quickly noticing that subscription monster actually was missing a bunch of the subscriptions. I think it correctly identified maybe 50% of the subscriptions. To benchmark though, when I feed the transactions into ChatGPT, I think it's correctly identifying like 30% of the subscriptions. So the 50% was a big increase, but definitely not not good enough. I needed to find a way to make sure that I can handle the other 50% that it was missing. This is actually a part where I had to sit down, go to the drawing board and try to come up with a really good architecture to find these subscriptions. I actually had to redo the architecture about seven times. So we're actually on version seven of this new architecture to identify subscriptions, but it did open my eyes that this is actually a very hard problem to solve. I naively thought that you could just feed in all of your transactions into AI, especially since the context window for some of these models is really high. Like the Gemini model has a 1 million token context window. You can actually feed in like two years worth of bank transactions in one go if you feed it into this model. Even though you can feed in a million tokens into a model, there is still a limit on the number of output tokens. If there's 80 plus subscriptions being identified, it's not gonna fit in that 4,000 token limit. My initial MVP, which is let's just feed it all into the model and just have it output in one go, that basically was not gonna work, especially if the business is bigger and has triple the amount of transactions that I have. I had to go to the drawing board a couple times. I tested a bunch of techniques like, what if I have multiple scans? What if I do an annual scan and then a monthly scan and then a bi-weekly scan? I do all these scans and then I add it together. And then I landed on a solution which was basically, I need to do a lot of pre-processing using AI before I even do the scan. So there's actually a bunch of different steps where I do something called normalization, where I take a really long transaction name and normalize it into a very small standard name and then I group all of these transactions together. Then I run an analysis on each of these groups. That's at a high level what I decided to do, but I had to do a ton of exploration to figure out that structure. It wasn't even just about figuring out can it identify the subscriptions. I needed to make sure that this was done in a cost-effective way because some of the solutions that I came up with when I ran the analysis, it cost like $30 to run, which I was like not economical. So I had to go back to the drawing board a lot. I had to try out a bunch of different models. And the primary model I'm using right now is actually Gemini 2.5 Flash Lite. Previously, it was identifying 50% of the subscriptions in the same same run, it's now able to identify 95% of the subscriptions. I'm still not fully confident in my solution, so I'm very excited to onboard more beta testers, throw more edge cases and scenarios at it, and see if it can handle it. For now, the solution is working really great. I will probably make a video going really deep on the architecture of how I made this AI solution, how I thought about the cost, how I was trying to figure out which model to use. So let me know if that's interesting, and I can probably make a separate video for that. A lot of these discoveries were made after the MVP. If you look back at the prompts that I was using to build the MVP, a lot of this was design related. If you look close at my prompts, they are pretty detailed. And the way that I achieve this level of detail is by dictating everything. That's actually my recommendation if you're working with Claude Code or any AI app. It's to dictate everything because you get way more detailed prompts. I always get a bunch of questions about this and the tool that I use is Whisperflow. Huge shout out to them for actually being a channel sponsor. Whisperflow is a smart voice to text app that works in any application. The reason Whisperflow is perfect for developers is it understands developer specific terminology. So if I say something like use state, convex schema, webhook handler, it gets it right every single time. If you're using it with Cursor and Windsurf, Whisperflow actually has integrations with these IDEs and it can understand what's going on in the code that you're looking at and even tag files. Check this out, if I'm inside of Cursor and I say, please enhance the styles from subscriptionoverview.tsx, 
it will actually tag the file without me having to type anything on the keyboard. And it accounts for variables in your code. So if I say something like, how is active count difference being used? It was able to identify that I was talking about this variable and it formats it correctly, which is extremely impressive. It's available on desktop. So if you're using it inside of cursor, cloud code, or ChatGPT like I do, it's there but you can also use it on iOS as well. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in using them. I also have a code for one month free. They did not have to do that. I'm the one that asked them to do that. So thank you to them for providing that. Definitely check it out. That's what I'm using for dictation. That's how the MVP went. In my opinion, it went pretty well. And even though there were a bunch of issues, pretty major issues that I had to correct, I still think this was a massive success and a great base for me to work off of. Next steps for me are I'm gonna spend a little bit more time really architecting the solution to make sure it's very good at accurately identifying subscriptions. I spent some time doing a deep dive on security because a product like this, especially one that's dealing with financial data, you need to make sure that the security is really, really good. I spend a lot of time building and I don't really think about security, which sounds really bad. And then I take the last couple days or weeks to really focus on security and just try to find as many gaps as possible and make sure things are up to standard. And then once that's done, I'm going to go and release the beta, which I'm very excited for. Over 150 people have joined the waitlist. So we actually have a really good pool of people to try it out, try to break it. The design of the MVP is also okay, but I wanna spend some time really digging into it. I'm actually gonna partner with my fiance, Cecilia, on the design for this one. So I'm gonna focus more on the functionality and some of the refinements, and I'm gonna let her take a stab at the design just because I think it'd be fun to collaborate with her on this one. She already has a couple of videos on her channel going in depth on this new design that we're working on together. So go check that out if you're interested. So that's my 48 hour MVP. Was it perfect? No. Did it identify every subscription? Also no, but it proved the concept out and it already saved me money immediately. I'll leave a link to the playlist below if you wanna see the rest of me building Subscription Monster from scratch. And if you're interested in this type of content, check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity apps. And obviously if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.